Hello everyone, welcome to your next class. In this one, we are going to spend more time looking at Markov models. Specifically, we're gonna look at this concept or this general uh, model called hidden Markov models. Again, lots of models in that introduction. Um, but we're gonna learn about how to do a, a more advanced technique with, with Markov chains, where we have additional features that are influencing our state space and what happens to our states. Uh, we're going to use the example of weather and, um, you know, going outside, we'll say sports again or something like that. But this is going to introduce to you the concept of latent features, which are like uh, these important pieces of information that will influence the outcome of uh, outcome of a of a Markov process. Basically, uh, what these extra pieces of information do to influence whether or not uh, you move from one state to another or stay in a state. So uh, in this class, we are going to introduce you to in, uh, hidden Markov models using an example that I'll. Uh, uh, it's a kind of a famous example, and then I'm going to uh, then syntax out uh, a, a kind of a, another example using um, using some visualizations. Okay, so first off, um, a hidden Markov model is uh, you know basically a Markov model, but you have all these additional features that are influencing your state space, and we call those features latent features. Uh, latent features are not directly observable, and they're hard to label or interpret. And what this means, guys, is that uh, <clears throat> usually you don't know what the latent features are for your model. Uh, it, it's kind of, you, you build your model, and you can maybe determine what those latent features are after, but they are aspects of your problem set that you can't directly observe. They're kind of hidden beneath something else. Uh, this is an important concept, not only for these Markov models, but it's uh, crucial for understanding of collaborative filtering and recommendation systems, as well as neural networks going forward, because you have hidden layers, which are kind of like your latent features and how they're interacting with each other. If you remember from last class, we started talking about emission probabilities. Emission probabilities, or pardon me, we talked about transition probabilities. Those are the transition likelihoods of moving from one state to another. Emission probabilities are uh, probabilities for the observations f that you would expect to find in a given with in a given hidden state. So what that means is emission probabilities are the probabilities for uh, your hidden, your latent features, and how they impact what states uh, you move between. Okay. Uh, so with that, let's just show you a visualization of what a hidden Markov chain would look like. Um, it might look a little bit familiar, but we'll we'll move towards what this all means uh, uh, over the next five minutes. <clears throat> so first off, the top. Uh, the top value is uh, called our start probabilities or our start, our starting phase. So this is before we enter any state and what initializes the whole chain and what gets it moving. In this case, we in the next layer is what, which, what our hidden states are going to be for this model. And then the final layer is the, uh, the, actu the, the, the actual states with transition probabilities, okay? So the problem we're looking at in this hidden Markov process is looking at three states, whether a person is walking, whether a person is shopping, or whether a person is cleaning. And the hidden states that we know in this example we're looking at, we might not, they're, they're not always observable, but for this simplified example, we can talk about it. Um, we have a bunch of hidden features that are related to the weather, two hidden features related to the weather, whether or not it's raining or sunny. So one would expect that when it's raining, people are gonna be more likely to shop or clean than they are to walk outside. And you'll see what these lines, I'll now explain what these lines mean. So the blue dotted lines are for the hidden feature rainy, and it's saying that if the current hidden state is rainy at the moment, that the likelihood of walking, shopping, or cleaning is different mainly that walking is a very low probability. The red is the same thing for the sunny side. So you would expect more walking and maybe more shopping and less cleaning when it's sunny out. The middle layer here is 
determining how likely it is to go from sunny to rainy. So you're seeing that if it's sunny, there's a 60% chance of it staying sunny, there's a 40% chance of it going rainy, and 70 to 30 the other way back. The top layer is if you don't know what the first state should be, you can give it a random chance and just say, in this case, there's a, because we're in, let's say, a very uh, rainy area like London or Vancouver, uh, it rains 50, 60% of the time on average <clears throat> for, your, for, this, for this model. And that initializes what hidden state uh, your model enters into. So a hidden Markov model is designed to uh, find your output features, your, your transition probabilities, based on your emission probabilities. And these emission probabilities are hidden states that usually you might have some understanding of, but you might not actually know what it is. Okay? So I'm going to uh, provide to you another example of a hidden Markov model uh, in our syntax section. So let's move on to that. Okay guys, welcome back. In this example, we're gonna talk about hidden Markov models a little bit more, but get away from the general uh, Markov chain visualizations and you know talking about weather and all that. We're going to talk about a different problem and I'm gonna see if we can label our latent features and our observable states and all that kind of stuff. So a classic, uh, a classic thought, pro or thought example for how hidden Markov models work is suppose you have three urns that are holding different shaped, different colored marbles or different shaped, you know, blocks. And we're gonna make three urns here. And now apologies for my silly, silly illustration skills. We have three urns and each of these is going to have a different set of shapes. Okay, we can do colors here. So I'll do like this urn has lots of triangles, but it also has a couple of crosses as well. Let's do four in there, a couple of crosses. This one has lots of crosses some circles and a triangle. Whereas this urn has lots of circles, lots of X's and a triangle. <clears throat> okay. So the problem that we're facing here is that we want to know what urn uh, if we were to select a bunch of shapes from an urn at random, like we just said, okay, I'm going to select this urn and I'm going to take out five shapes. Let's say there's hundreds in here, okay? But they're like proportioned in this way. I'm gonna select this urn and I'm gonna take out five shapes. And the likelihood of me, if I was to take out five shapes, would be probably something like that, let's say. And now, so if we knew what the, 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 the amount of different shapes in each of these urns were, we could say that, okay, if we, if we took out these shapes in this sequence and this order, then by, it's likely that we selected from this urn here, okay? And the reason for that is we have lots of circles and lots of crosses. It could also be number two here, and maybe it's like, you know, we have a probability of 0.7 and a probability of 0.3. We definitely know that it can't be this urn. And why is that? Because this one doesn't have any circles in it. So this would be at zero for this example, okay? So in this example, our observable state, our, our observable states are like this sequence here. The latent features are what urn we selected from because these, this is unobserved in our example. Let's say we didn't know what urn we selected from. And, um, you know, we could say that our starting probabilities is we are going to pick one at random. So, you know, 0.33. Okay. So in this example, we can theoretically build a hidden Markov model by knowing, by either hypothesizing what 
uh, you know, what earn what, what transition probabilities exist in here. Uh, we can, or we can build it from some example data. So we can say, you know, we'll fit in. We can give it this, and it can be labeled. So we'd say, you know, this is okay. We, that's earn is three. So three. We have another, another extraction. We get lots of triangles. X. So that is going to be zero, <coughs> and so on and so forth. Okay. And so we could build hidden layers, which would be basically like the, the features that exist in the proportions for each of these urns, okay? That's basically another way of describing how a hidden Markov model works. You don't know what urn someone picked from. You might know the distribution of shapes that are in the urn or have some sort of idea about them. You've, you have, you've done some analysis around this and then you need to figure out what urn this was selected from. You can probably do it in the opposite direction too, where you know what urn was selected, but you don't know the probabilities or distributions within the urn. So if you can do this the other direction, so let's say you have these now, and it's like this is three, this one is earn, uh, earn one, and I'll cross this out, earn one, and you want to now learn what, uh, which urn have like these, the, the proportions within these different urns. So you can build these models in either direction. It can be both supervised and unsupervised, um, depending on which way you are, which way you're uh, building your model. If you give it the transition probabilities ahead of time, uh, it doesn't need to be supervised. It doesn't have to, because you have the, you don't have the observed states. If you do have the observed states, you can then create your transition probabilities from the, from the data. Otherwise, you'll need to figure out another way to build them. Okay, guys, uh, let us now do a recap after talking about hidden Markov models. <clears throat> So in this class, we learned the difference between simple Markov chains and hidden Markov models. We learned the concept of latent features, which are like unobserved features that are represented in the data and how uh, the data is being represented. And we talked about two examples of hidden Markov models with visualizations to get your brains kind of going on uh, when these might be appropriate times to use a hidden Markov model, okay? So in our next class, we are going to build a hidden Markov model. It might be only a one, uh, one class coding session, guys, because uh, visualizing Markov models is not easy and it's kind of beyond the scope of this class. I really kind of want, or, uh, let, you know, a chapter, I should say, and I want you to kind of be introduced to hidden Markov models uh, rather than getting into them too deep because they are pretty complicated. So. Uh, we'll see how far we get in uh, in our next coding session. Maybe it's only one class. Uh, and if so, uh, great. So with that, guys, thank you very much and see you then.